Hello and welcome to Monday Musings. Today we've got a very exciting new release. We are going hands-on with uh, one of the hottest releases coming out in 2021 yes. and it's only January. Well, February now. It is just about February. <laughs> uh, happy February, everyone. Uh, it's a very special month for me and Max. Both of our birthdays are in February. Yep. Uh, it's my favourite month of the year. Is it really? Yeah. I always find February incredibly depressing. That's... With only like one little bright point that is, I've got a birthday happening in there in the middle. No, I, I, I like February. I, February. I like February because it's a short month. We've got a perfectly okay. square February this year as well. Oh yeah, well, Monday, Monday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why don't we do that every year? Right, that would be perfect. Julian calendar's still not perfect. <laughs> Go back to how it was. Uh, we are the wrong way around. On oh the yeah. Yeah, yeah, well I'm going to change um, the nameplates instead. We've jostled around with what the yes. stream was actually going to look like tonight a lot because we had some things that we wanted to try. I tried them and I went, I hate that and it's not going to work for the audience. So <laughs> apologies. You're uh, looking at the uh, construction section. Yes. Haggard, no, we don't own War Games Illustrated. We are their main distributor. Um, That's how that works. Yeah, uh, we don't. They're a completely separate entity, but we are their main distributor to trade and retail. Mm -hmm. They also have their own distro arrangements with news agents and things. Oh, but uh, okay. thank I you didn't know that one. But thank you very much for the uh, congratulations. Yeah, on... we we're on the front cover, were we? Yeah, we're on the front cover in the little site in the little bottom bar. Oh, neat! Is that is that magazine downstairs? Yeah, hmm. I'm gonna get myself one. I was gonna say, wait, wait, wait on that though. <laughs> Not yet. Get Calm your eagers. I'm going to get myself one and send it home to my your parents. Horses. Oh, really? I still need to send uh, an issue to my missus. Yeah. But that that's for later. So, we have both spent about an hour giving a good look over this. Yes. We've had flicks through before, but it was, let's sit down and have a look. Um, so, this is very exciting. Obviously, we've got the big box as well. Yes. Uh, next week... Uh, COVID allowing, we will be playing a game, but I see no reason why that should be held up. So expect to see a game with these very models. They won't be fully painted, but we can have a good go of it. Yeah. We've got a two camera setup today, so we can hopefully get you some uh, close ups on what goodies are in here. We've got a rule book each. So if anyone has any questions about how Warlords of Erewhon works, we're not the biggest experts, but we do know how that system works and the new stuff for the Mythic America setting as well. Any questions at all? Please let us know, because I know some people have got their rule books ready. Some people might still be waiting. Some people might be on the fence about ordering it. Let us tell you why yes. you need this rule book, because uh, we're busy hobbyists, aren't we? Yes. And we both right. have a lot of too many armies on a plate, too many projects on a plate. Yep. But what did you say after you read that out of rule book? Uh, I think the audience needs to know about your first initial reaction, because it was a positive one. Uh, yeah, I basically said this is the rule book of ours mm -hmm. that... I've had the most kind of instant I want to play this game reaction to. Yeah. Like, cause, I mean, I, I'd ha I've had this shamefully on my desk for about two <laughs> months. Yeah. And because obviously with COVID, I've been working from home a lot. I haven't been in the office. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of sat there. Obviously, we knew we were doing this tonight. So we kind of, yeah, we said we we're going to go away for an hour yep. and just read through it. And in an hour, I was kind of able to go through all the rules, uh, have a flick through at the units and the kind of the vague themes of all the armies. And it's kind of left me with some real keen to play the game. And a lot of the times with a new rule book, I'll read through it. I'll go, yeah, that looks cool. You know, I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's well balanced, but possibly not for me. Yeah, a lot of the time I'll not read... Not right up my alley. Yeah, or, or, or if not like that, it'll be more a case of I'll read the rules and then go, yeah, I could see myself doing something with that at some point. Whereas with this, it's like, I want to get these home and start painting. Which is the uh, plan tonight. I don't know how much we're going to get done tonight because it's too dark out to get spray in. But there yeah. we go. But one thing, <clears throat> one thing I particularly want to reference is exactly what you said this book reminded you of. Yes. Because um, this book really reminds me of old school 40k. Yeah. I was saying the exact same thing about small scale old fantasy. Because mm. um, it's not huge mass battles kind of game. It's more skirmishy, which is appropriate for the um, subject material. But it felt... Really old school in a really good way. It's been modernised with things like your order dice mechanic, D10. D10. It's a really streamlined system to actually just get up, get playing, and I'm really yeah. happy with Re the system. Reading through it, I was actually feeling a lot of, you know, I was a, a fourth ed and fifth ed 40k player primarily. Yeah. You know, and basically as the additions went on and the evil empire made you buy more and more books, I kind of dropped out of it. Um, but l reading this, I honestly got a little bit nostalgic. Uh, the way that it's written, the language is very old school mm -hmm. um, in terms of it's very much like you're having a conversation with the rules writer. Okay. Um, and I really enjoy that. And, you know, the way the examples are done feels like the old 4th Ed rule book, which is just cool. They made sense. <laughs> um, and obviously at the core of it, it is a Rick Priestley game. Yeah. Um, which is, it's uh, is it Nick Martinez? Uh, Nelson, sorry. No, I do apologise. Nelson Martinez 
and um, Chris Rometz um, from Mythicos Studios, who are our partners in America. Mm -hmm. um, they've done an awesome job taking Rick's baseline Warlords of Erewhon and turning it into something really unique. I actually also really enjoy the, for want of a better word, fluff behind it. I mean, mythology is probably more accurate. Yes, I think definitely mythology, not fluff. Um, but it's their own spin on it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's what I would call semi-authentic mythology, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of cramming all of these different mythologies into one. Um, Making a modern monomyth. Ooh. You've been reading. <laughs> I know, I've been reading all day. I've been reading a book. Um, Very good. There we go. Ooh. And Minicam, ready for when it wants to go. Nice shot of the arm there. Um, Someone's into it. Someone's no. really into it and it's worrying. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think um, the thing I found with this as well, the other thing this reminds me of, is Medi 2 Total War, Americas, which is an underrated, for my money, expansion it's... to that game. There's someone out there who's just said, reset the clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it is very much that, you know, on the face of it, if, for example, your Inca and your Maya and your Aztec are functionally the same historically yeah. in the kinds of armies you're seeing. But because this is a Warbands game and not a mass battles game, the designers have really been able to give them each their own unique feeling. And we'll go into that a little bit later, just touch on what some of the yeah. units feel like and what some of the nations feel like overall. Yeah, because there's all sorts of stuff in here. There's some stuff that hasn't really been announced if you've only been following the um, uh, model Press announcements yeah. kind of things. So if you've already got the rule book, you'll be like, oh, I'm not surprised by that, but there's, there's Maya stuff that you've not seen yet and uh, stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff still to uh, surprise the world, I think, with this. So, yeah, um, absolutely. I'm really looking forward to getting a game with this next yeah, week. Yeah, genuinely, again, with a lot, of time, a lot of the times when, no, obviously we do this and it's our job, and we love doing it, Sometimes less obvious, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of the time, you know, we'll play a game or, you know, we'll have a game coming up mm. and I'll be approaching the game with, you know, kind of what I'd call quite a workman-like attitude. Yeah. Which is, you know, I want to come in... Is I'm, it balanced? How are the models? Let's yeah. get through it. <laughs> Let, let's play a good game of bolt action, for example, that shows it off on the stream. Yeah. And people can enjoy watching. You know, we're, we're not performing, but there is a little bit of that into the, in mm -hmm. there. With this, I want to pick it up and play a game for the joy of playing a game of it. Oh, God, yeah. Um... So that's um, that's you know that's a bit different for me. You know, it's one of the times when I kind of sit here and go, "You're not working for this company, is all right." <laughs> um, Haggard. So it's all compatible with OG Warlord armies, right? There is a note in the rulebook from the designers mm -hmm. where they basically what they said is we haven't play tested it against OG Warlords of Arrow yeah. armies. So they haven't done, for example, Incans ver Incas versus Knights. However, they do reckon. It's doable, yeah. but it might not be the most balanced. It might not be one-to-one. -one. <laughs> no. Uh, it may well be something that you need to home rule, but the core game is the same. And yeah. It may well be in the future that we might do something to combine the two, but this is one of the things I really like about this, is it's also a standalone copy of oh, yeah. the base rules. If and you've never played before, this, which is included in this for reference, this is where I got my copy, um... There you go. As we've got a couple of people in the chat. Um, hey, Joel Farchetto. Hey, uh, so we're home. Hey there, Stumpy. Nice to see you as always. Um, Haggard, I've already said hi to you, but hi. And Mike, good to hear you uh, tuning in. I think we were talking earlier on the email chain. I didn't think you were able to make these too often, so it's nice to have awesome. you along. Uh, what have you missed so far? <laughs> Very little apart from us uh, saying what we're talking about, which is the new Mythic Americas um, set, yep. Warlords of Era 1. I, it's, I, it feels wrong to call it, call it an expansion, because it's not an expansion. It's a spinner DLC, a, de a yeah. high quality DLC. <laughs> yeah, it's so high quality that when you download it, it no, this, this is a new game based off the same engine. Yes, absolutely. That, that's what this is if we want to turn it into that terminology. Yes. So it's something completely new based off tech, you know, and hopefully. Love. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and the really interesting thing is I first read Warlords of Era One um, when it first came out because I just joined the company. Yeah, that when one beat me. Uh, that one was around before I was. So yeah. I didn't see the initial release on um, I remember, like, literally, it was the first... Haggard, exactly right. Uh, it was the first day <laughs> that I came into the office. My first oh, day, nice. I was given a copy of Warlords of Everyone and said, here's our brand new game, go away and learn this. And I didn't. Um, well, I've got, you know, I've got kind of... <laughs> you were like, there's like 20 bolt action books there. Yeah, I, that, need, to, I, want that. I need to read <laughs> those first. No, um, but, you know, I've got a basic working familiarity mm. with it. And I've never played a game of Warlords of Everyone. 
Um, I never have. I've got an army for it, funnily enough. I've got two armies for it, technically. <laughs> but um, I've never had a chance to just get it on the table. But this, again, is just such a such a nice little self-contained standalone game that and it's for me as well as a the world's laziest and slowest <laughs> painter um i love modeling love that side of the hobby when it comes to painting it makes me want to cry um an awful lot um but um the best results when he's painting bring onions as well then he's got an excuse yeah yeah keeps um, him productive <laughs> also i get to eat onions um but um we've eaten a lot of onions over here so we have um and turnips you weren't, there. Many you weren't there for the uh, you weren't there for the raw turnip eating contest. I was there for that time we depressingly ate a whole cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> <The gossip. laughs> anyway, we're off topic. So like, without what, further ado, that's enough waf waffle. We that's turn on side cam, so I'm going to bring that up. I, for reference, haven't seen this. Max has had it open a few times today, just to make sure, obviously, that he knows what he's talking about. Oh, there we go. What, what was it our, uh, uh, one of our old managers used to say? Uh, one of our old managers used to say, if a box farts, <laughs> it's a good game. Uh, I didn't go that time. You only get one. <laughs> I'm going to prop that up a little bit so it's got a bit uh, high. So, so, so I've not seen this before. Have you not? So okay. what, what have we got in here? So normally there would be this very nice rule book on top of it. Right now there isn't, for obvious reasons. So um, you've got all your bases. Bases this time are all in MDF. They're a little bit bigger than the was. I think they're 30 rounds, not yeah, 25. They like they're not quite 32s, so they're not going to be compatible with that range. However, but they're very, very, very close. And in fairness, the designers do say in the book, absolutely fine to use. Oh, totally base agnostic. Yeah. Uh, completely base agnostic, and also scale agnostic to an extent. They recommend if you yeah. want to play this at 20 mil or 15 mil. Because this, this is 28 very heroic. Oh, well. yeah, so this is... This is big boy <laughs> models. Uh, this is, yeah, this isn't your... Gra this, is, uh, this is your grandfather's 28 mil. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how old he is. But, um, is he... Big stack of dice, a lot of D10s, you'll need those. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for those who aren't affiliated with Worlds of Everyone, you're definitely going to want those. All the dice as well. Um, this is an all the dice system. Um, I don't think, I don't like games about all the dice system at this point. No, like, it's... I put di all the dice back into games that don't have it. I practically put all the dice in my cereal at the moment. I mean, in fairness, <laughs> it's, um, I, I, it's our signature mechanic. Yeah. And it works so well for so many games. You can play without it because you've got Victory at Sea and the other yeah. ship you don't games. Need but... it. I think for your 28 mil infantry and even like some of your bigger infantry, you want that. Oh, I think absolutely. it works so well. Um, so you get your big deck of cards that comes in very handy with some of the scenarios. Yes. The this is this is a hard one to explain because there's actually quite a lot involved in this. But the way, yes, the way takes such a big thing. It's it's basically a new way, no pun intended, to play your scenarios. Mm -hmm. There are you are ever changing or ever living. Yes. That is your core tenant. So for example, the Aztecs are ever living, where the um uh, What's the correct term? Is it, what are they listed as? In, would it be, who are you thinking? Tribal nations? Is it just tribal nations? Okay, yes. yeah. Just tribal it, nations. It, it encompasses yeah. all could, of your tribes. I'm trying to think. I don't want to say the wrong thing here, because I yeah. know a lot of people put a lot of work into this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the tribal nations, are something, they're ever-changing. But I do believe you can uh, switch as well. You can switch, but I think, eh, there's, there's more themes. Yeah, there's, there's, theme. there's some which fit better, kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Um, um, so you've got all your cards in there. You've got, a card, I think some magic cards in here. You know what? Let's, let's, let's open it. Let's open it. Let's, 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 let's open it. Crack it. Um, I mean, that's a really cool thing in, as Max kind of meant, alluded to with the scenarios. The way it works is you've got your basic scenario. So you've got, you know, your main objective yeah. and it might be... Show up, kill enough of yeah. your opponent's guys while taking an objective that's in the yeah. middle of the table. Or, and then what you have is each player gets to draw from their deck of um, objectives different secondary objectives which are secret until you score them for the first time and they basically relate to which side of the way you follow oh that's cool included on the cards i didn't know this one like i said it's literally the first time we've cracked it you've actually got the scenarios on cards oh so instead of going oh what page is it oh, i scroll if you think you yeah. just go cool today we're playing one build altars for the gods or the rainy season or the great hunt or pillage the village loving that one uh, liberators and captives or do you remember that game, you remember that game? pillage that village is that a Flash game? Yeah. Yeah, back in the day. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. I love Flash. Um, um, Devotion to the Ever Living. Oh my God, so much. The, 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 it's, I forgot about these. You know what? This, what are these? Are the Devotions. Are these still deck building? The, the, yeah, they're your starting deck build where you basically get certain abilities based on your devotions to the way. Oh my god, um, I forgot about this. And that's yeah. so there's a whole. So there's extra ever changing for depth. Example. Yeah. Like, wow. There's so a whole you... extra depth to this game away from just rolling the dice. Um, which oh, I think... There's your magical cards. Yeah. Oh, the magic list is awesome. Um, 
So I think presumably you might get other ones sold later because this one's specifically Aztec yes. magic. So I think when we get our um, and that's Tribal Nations magic. Sorry. So presumably when we get um, packs for the Incas, the Maya, and stuff like that, we will have possibly like included in a box. I reckon set, like, they're going to come with the cards. box set comes with the cards to get you magic, but those are going to be important for our game next week. Yes, they I are. I think I've actually got a cast on my list. I think, uh, I've, got, I'm, I think I've got a bashy one. Because mm. I think your leader, because you wanted to take the... As, oh yeah, for reference, yeah. this is a hobby project. I'm playing the Tribal Nations. I'll be playing the Aztecs. Um, so Max is going to have... Um, yeah, and there's also... <laughs> If you ever forget who you're playing, there's cards that say who you are. <laughs> there. What those are for? So you can randomly draw. Oh, if you don't want to, yeah. If, yeah, if, cool. you, if you pick want a card and you yeah. card who you're taking, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, there's so there's so much in here that means that yeah, there's six scenarios in the book. And, you know, if I'm looking at a game and there's six baseline scenarios, mm. I'm kind of thinking. All right, well, you know, I'll play through those six a few times. I've never played the six scenario in bolt action. I've never rolled it. It's the one where you set up an HQ and you've got to hit your opponent's one. Oh, I've both set an HQ. I really want to give that one a try. I've never actually rolled that. We'll do it on the stream sometime. Yeah, I've um, got a nice marker for it now because I got a uh, wall without hate. Oh, yeah, Perfect I saw that. that. We need to do a showcase that at some point because that was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, uh, for reference, we're not doing Hobby Corner tonight because I completely forgot to set it up. It's actually been a really busy day today, <laughs> and that's why this stream was a whole two minutes late. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, what else have we got in here? We've got, uh, looks like, some. T- we're holding out on the good stuff, which is the metal pieces. And we've got, who, who packed this? We've got Morella. And Squiggle. And Squiggle. BW? Uh, RW? I don't know. Not a clue. Um, I only really work with these people. <laughs> now, you look, we've got our tokens. Let's back a bit. Yeah, you got yeah. Our tokens. So, you know, we've got things like, for example, units got armoured buff, an armour buff. Uh, you've got, yeah, corpses for some of the rituals that you can yep. perform. Um, I think these are also objectives because you've got things yeah. like the Eldorado El- map El- spot. Yeah. Eldorado. The Eldorado map spot is absolutely ridiculous and I love it. There's two, um, mm. one is for ever living and one is for ever changing. I can't remember which way around it is. Yeah. But basically what you're trying to do is either find a map to Eldorado. Yeah. Which can be in one of two terrain pieces. Or you're trying to find the Fountain of Youth, which can be in one of two <laughs> terrain, place, terrain pieces. Oh, wow. And what I really like, actually, is with the ever-living and ever-changing object, secondary mm-hmm. objectives, one is very focused on doing things with your units, and the other one is very focused on doing things to your enemy's units. Yes, which makes sense. You know, yeah. it's not you're never stuck doing one thing kind of uh, thing. Does this game have human sacrifice in it? Kind of, yes. Uh, there are sacrificial yeah. virgins oh, okay. that wizards can take to um, buff their spell casting ability. You missed that. Yeah, it was in, it was in one of the special rules. Um, there's also, obviously, it's... What I would say is this is very heavily based on the myths and legends yeah. of Mesoamerican and Northern American cultures. I can never remember the name of the period, but this is all pre-European arrival. Yeah. Um, this is pre-Cortez. Um, well, I think it's a little bit fantasy. I spoke you've got Maya and Aztec on the same yeah. board. I'm pretty sure they were barely they, overlapping. Yeah. It, I mean, the, they, they tail-ended when the one was with barely significant and where one was rising but kind of falling Pre-Columbian. Up. Thank you, Haggard. That makes yeah, sense. absolutely. Um, even even pre-Erickson, um, I would say. Um, but, uh, Happy Leap Erickson Day. <laughs> That's uh, coming up, actually. It's February 12th, isn't it? How do you know that? The Mrs. Studies Viking and... Oh, yeah, course, and she's American. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Duh. <laughs> hello, Comradeson. Um, but it is very sensitively treated. You know, this was... You can tell this game was written by people that really care about the heritage involved. Yeah, big shout-out, because this this is a author I don't think we've worked with directly before. But everyone who's worked on this one has been absolutely fantastic. Um... What's the actual name uh, name? Right at the top. So we've got uh, the main, main oh, man yeah, Nelson, Nelson Martina, yeah. from Mythicos yeah, yeah. and uh, Chris from Etz. Um And there's actually a really lovely section right at the start where Nelson is talking about the culture, where he comes from culturally mm-hmm. and how it influenced him growing up and why he's done this the way he's done this. So it's written by people that care about the heritage that they're representing here. And I've done it really sensitively. But yes, there is human sacrifice because <laughs> they're portraying some pretty brutal Yeah, cultures. you look at the Wendigo. That thing's covered in blood and the way we painted it. And that's for a reason. And the, uh, the <laughs> IR. 
The, oh yeah, oh god, the eyes. Yeah, we've not even got into the monstrosities. We'll get into the monstrosities. That, that's a whole new set of rules, especially for people who are familiar with our games. That's going to be a wait. They can do what moment? Because yeah. I had that. Uh, but anyway, going through the last of the cards, we've got um, objectives, nice and simple. Alter objectives, because sometimes you've got secondaries that might be different from these ones. Those are for the primaries. Um, those are for the first mission. Where your your objective in the is to run the around planters, isn't it? building altars yeah, yeah. to the gods. Um, and Fountain of Youth, over. funnily enough, um, and pillage buildings. Obviously, sometimes for stuff like this, you can pillage that own. village. Well, I was going to say make your own uh, yeah. terrain wise, but this is a starter kit in a box, not yes. just some models in a box. So we've co covered all eventualities, and of course, templates. We always love templates. Yes. Um, if you are literally starting up the hobby for the first time, this is all you need. So I'm going to take that away so we can get a bit more contrast. Yes. Because we've got one, two, three bags of metals. Ooh. Which we all like. So let's crack open number one first. I think I've actually gone through these earlier, just so I actually know what we're doing. So I think I'm the weight of this. I've not seen any of these. This is going to be my guys. I think this is the Aztecs. Okay. Oh, I'm the Aztecs. Know. You're the tribals. Oh, no, yes. Here, here you go. Let's have a look. This is like Christmas 2. Get my hands in there. <laughs> Oh, that's a, that's a lot of rattly bits. Yeah. Zombies! Yeah, so I put those all together just so we kind of know what we're doing. So if you want to kind of set them up. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't know how well you can... So you uh, want to go slightly back. You want to go back there. Oh, there we go. Ma Max is, uh, Max is um, film skills coming in here. So that's a random foot troop. A, tl a Tlalocan bound dead, I believe. Yeah, is it, I believe that's your Tlalocan mm. unit leader. Yeah. Very nice model. And so if you want to do the same thing, it's just about there. <laughs> oh. th th this hand down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Max uh, also helps me put my trousers on in the morning, <laughs> otherwise I forget. Uh, not getting a great picture, but he is my leader. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, Max. Save me. Um, I don't know how well it's showing up. He is. Oh, he's him. just got the biggest <laughs> Macahuitl. And I'm a huge... You may or may not know this, so I don't know if I've ranted about Macahuitl. I don't think you have on camera. Um, I love Macahuitl. Uh, if I had to pick a single, you know, a historical weapon that I would say is my favourite, it's either the Pollax, because I've got one and I, I love Pollaxes, they're awesome, they're great to fight with, or it's the Macahuitl, and I really want to get a Macahuitl. So, that, there is your warband, starter warband coming out. So, so obviously, if you get collector's three, edition. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen 13, 14, 15 models. Yeah. And that's quite hoardy. That's pretty hard, yeah. Um, is that right? As you know, I think it's supposed to go like that. So you get a five mana, yes. five mana, five mana. So slightly wrong. That yeah. makes sense. But that's all the models. Yeah. Um, and yes, Mike. Aztec zombies. Let me uh, go to the Aztec page. Speed, speed, speed. Basically, the every nation... And one thing I really love is the tactical tips on this as well. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll get onto that in a second. Every nation has basically its vibe. Mm -hmm. And the Aztec vibe is Undead Warriors. It's a zombie horde. And it's going on a whole bunch of Aztec myth. Yeah. So instead of just going, oh, you've got some Aztec warriors, because this <laughs> isn't about a historical battle or historical yeah. warfare. This is basically what happens when all of the Miso and Northern American... End of the world myths happen at once. Happen at once, and then someone go has the bright idea to go. Well, I can be the king of this, and I reckon I can take over the world with this force. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the Aztecs, their thing is obviously um, zombies um, and magical buffs and magical casters. Um, so looking at kind of the things that you can get, obviously you've got your jaguar warriors and your eagle warriors. For those of us that are total war guys, <laughs> very familiar with those. And I'm really looking forward to those. Um, your leader is a mage. And that's pretty unique. Not yeah. completely unique, but most of the time your leader's are kind of a bashy guy or a leadership guy. The Aztecs, because your force is a lot of um, zombies, you need to have a mage to kind of keep them going and buff them around. Yeah, similar to, for those who used to play it, similar to your vampire counts kind of vibe. Yeah, absolutely. You need your leader to kind of give them all the buffs. They might not be the strongest, they might not be the fastest. You know, a zombie on its own has a lot of debuffs. It's generally pretty slow. It's generally not the smartest fight, but you know what? They can take a hell of a beating. Oh, absolutely. Those things just go. They, you know, straight up the bat, they have and tough you, and dread. And you bring a whole bunch of them. How many points are they? Like 55 points for a squad. Yeah. So for reference, uh, we'll show it in a minute, but the standard uh, tribal nations uh, unit for close combat is the Mohawk Warriors. Yeah. They're, I think they're a little bit faster. They're... Um, a little bit... Um, better at fighting. Better at basically everything, but 
they're not undead, which doesn't come with the same amount of bonuses. Yeah. They, they, the undead are just hard to kill, and they're cheaper for it. And let's look at the Aztec monstrosities. You got Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is large, tough, fast, oh. multiple hits, venomous, flying, and a wizard. <laughs> he's a wizard. Right? He's, a, he's a mage level too. And then you also have the IR, which I think is the most gruesome model we've ever made. Yeah. Hands down. And its whole thing is it hurls corpses at people. And yeah, I, I'm looking forward to actually taking a deeper dive on this and reading mm. what, what what is that? Where does uh, right, that come from? I, so I've not had a chance I'm, to read the uh, background text. I'm yet. big on my cryptids and mythology, mostly in fairness, Northern European cryptids, you know, and English cryptids especially. I'll talk to you about worms and things for days. Um, Armageddon or... Uh... <laughs> uh, 3D, mate. Out. <laughs> oh, chili, dude, 3D with the chili con carnage. Um, but no, um, and yes, Mike, you're absolutely right. It's a warband skirmish game, and warband is the appropriate term. objective word there as yeah. well. Because, you know, bolt action is theoretically a skirmish game. Oh, yeah. In no, terms no. of numbers on the table. These guys, you know, this is a starting warband of 15 dudes. Yeah, this would be a bit of a small game, I think. Oh, yeah. Looking at it, you well, could probably like quadruple this they, like, army they, size to get a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour two hour game. They recommend 2,000 points yeah. for about two to two-and-a-half hours of a game. Which is about normal for that kind of thing. Yeah. So you're not going to see, like... You probably see more models than a bolt action army. Yeah. But way less than, like, a Hail Caesar, Pike and Shot, that kind of thing. It's not yeah. a mass battle game. Absolutely. And uh, the, all the sculpts here are so cool. Uh, yeah. These are in metal. Um, uh, yep. And I think the whole start set models are in metal. Yeah, can confirm. Traditional, we know how to do it. The sculpts are just awesome. It's not showing up on camera, but the detail in here. I'm, I always know. Yeah, Robin's posted a video about it that um, I strongly recommend you check out if you haven't already. Um, Robin has a really nice, expensive camera that he's taken yes. lots of still shots. I, I so he's know, not kind of I know faffing it like this. I know a model's a good sculpt when I look at it and go, how the hell am I going to paint this? <laughs> Um, so yeah, these guys obviously, um, don't be surprised if you see them, uh, strangely pink, um, for our game, because at the very least, obviously I'm going to get them sprayed up. Oh, well, yours are going to be grey, I believe. Uh, yes, great. Yours are going to be pink. Yeah. Mine my, my just getting done in, uh, barbarian flesh, because I don't expect to have them finished, so. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's not like you were saying fairly recently that you didn't want to pick up anything else this year that wasn't no, 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 I very dis uh, distinctly said, I, if it was for work, it's a separate thing. This is true. So, um, painting ten models for work is... That's, that's fine. I can handle that. Um, I'm not buying any new models this year. I've not done it yet. It's a pretty good Val. Yeah, not done anything yet. Uh, Modeling supplies, go for it. What Max Which doesn't, like. what, well, Ma what Max does know is it's his birthday coming up, and I have a tradition of buying. And gift is fine as well. Fun. Gift yeah. is fine. Yeah, I have a tradition of buying Max the most useless unit I can think of for bolt action for his birthday. <laughs> And I've got some good ideas this year because there's some doozies in the Soviet list. <laughs> and uh, I've got most of them, so there's only a he's limited. Of he's limited. So let's uh, let's take my uh, yeah, get, get shab them out of my here. shambling corpses the bag, off yeah. the table, and uh, we will get uh, your tribals. Yeah. So this is bag two. Now to get the right bag. <laughs> get them out of here. I'm sorry, I got caught up admiring them. <laughs> ah, okay. So up first is my archers and my. Sit. Ah, you Sack have, to, you have to assemble yours. Only a little bit. I should put the. Oh, I see what I've done. So, yeah, we've got the Sackham Warlord with the two assistants. Yep, there's two Mohawk warriors with tomahawks. And one of those has very slight amount of building. And some archers. So, you've. That's a I'm really. Sure an archer. Yeah, so this isn't the whole set. Either. I was going to say, there's a third in. bag, isn't there? Yeah. So. That's the starter, and then I believe there's another five Mohawk Warriors in here to make up a whole set. Um, again, tiny bit of assembly on these, but they are really easy to build. I kind of test fit them out. It's going to be the easiest thing in the world because they've got nice big shoulder pegs and yeah. arm pegs. So they're going to be fun to put together, I think. You know, nice and simple. Chuck them on a base, spray them up, get them painted. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But they are super dynamic. I'm going to see. Yeah, the painted. pose, even on the zombies, which are, you know, shambly. The posing's dynamic, but these guys are yeah, so much try and motion. Get that in a little bit. Um, so again, it's not going to show up fantastically, but you get a kind of sense for um, the amount of motion you can get in there, and they they look great. <laughs> I'm yeah. really really looking forward to getting some paint on these, and they don't do that thing that a lot of models do when you start getting to the slightly more heroic, bigger scales. They've not over detailed them. Yeah. There's plenty of detail, but it's not like I'm looking at that going, oh. 
God, that's going to take every single yeah. hit of this. It's going to take weeks to paint and they're never going to be yeah. done. They are a sensible amount of detail for some overall really nice models that I think are going to look really good on the uh, tabletop. Absolutely. And I may or may not have a couple of these kicking around at home already. Ooh. So, quids in. <laughs> uh, Comrades, what's better to use? Uh, when is it better to use Archer or Bowman? They are actually completely interchangeable, although obviously Archer is gender neutral. Um, personally, I prefer the uh, medieval European Valetti for missile armed troops. Um, anyway, I think Arch is generally the go-to. Though. Yeah, Bowman's a little bit modern. I was going to say antiquated. I've never seen anyone use it. Um, it's but it's one. it's Archer is you know that's there's plenty of it for hist- historicity mm-hmm. um, in English at least. Um, Bowman is old-fashioned but more modern when it comes in. If that makes sense. Um, sure. But um, yeah, personally, I I just here. mix and match the two. Depends on what comes out of my mouth. Um, yeah, in Spanish, uh, Aquero, um, very similar to Arch. Yeah, same root word. I like Arch, but that's a completely different thing. Yeah, sadly, they uh, never got round. Uh, you know, you, you don't get the Wish knockoff called Bowman. <laughs> um, I can make one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we could, couldn't we? But yeah, um, they're really cool. I, I'm yeah, not super detailed again. Um, even just... the Archers. I just want to point that guy out. But show him up to the camera if you can. Because even, like, you know, archers, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. archers traditionally, you know, they can be a bit boring and a bit static. Yeah, that but works. that guy, look with his leg at full stretch, and he, he just looks, for a model that's in a static firing pose, he's so dynamic, and I think yeah. that's really cool. And I think when they get painted up, they're going to look even better for it, because, yeah, there's some really crazy stuff going on here. And I think, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing these. Yeah, there's in the, tons uh, of detail on those. Getting these painted up. So I've got a couple of these at home. Yeah, I got. I think I got a whole unit. Yeah, you're right, Haggard. They are bigly. I mean, we don't. Annoyingly, we should have bought in a bolt action model to compare it to. Um, let's see if we've got a bolt action model walking so around. Because um, yeah, you're right. These are big. Max is going to see if he can find a couple of dudes from our existing ranges. We have some Caesarians. Some uh, Caesarians who are actually uh, on. Oh, they're the new Caesarians, aren't they? The new yeah. Caesarians. So these are so these are some SPQR um, and Hail Caesar Caesarians. Yeah, so actually not tons different. I'd say the big thing is they're chunkier. They're very much chunkier, and their poses are very much out, whereas he's, you know, quite scrunched in. Yeah, so they're, they're thicker in the model. I'm trying to get it to the um, basis. Right, there you go. What kind of size table do you play this on, and do you have any scenic examples? Six by four. Six by four. No, we don't have any scenic ga- I think examples. I Mythicos do. Check out their Facebooks, I'm pretty yes. sure they do. Um, Mythicos Studios, that's, uh, we'll get that typed in the description at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they are they are the company. They're basically a sister company to us in the states. We don't own them, but we're partnered with them. Yeah. They're opening stores. I know they were before the pandemic. I hope that's still happening. Um, they're opening stores in the states, which are going to be Mythicos and Warlord stores, almost like a Games Workshop, um, but better because it's us. Yeah, and them. Yeah, <laughs> um, and they came over actually. Um, I don't think they're actually going to scale up too badly if you wanted to play them off against each other. Yeah, obviously the like, only thing is with all metals, you've got the um, the plug on the base. Yeah, uh, they are a little bit bigger, but they actually scale quite nicely in my opinion. But I'm yeah. not too fussy. Um, I think we. I can definitely see some scenery over there. Yes, that's currently off camera. Um, We've got plenty of scenery that will make up a good board. Yeah, and um, we're going to make a good board for next week because yes. there is plenty of stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we'll be doing it on like a scene. I don't think we'll be doing it on a scenic board because I don't think we've got the right scenic board. I think we're going to be doing it on this and then set it up as a forest next week. Yeah, absolutely, like a forest or a jungle. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'll be uh, that'll be. And we've got so much stuff. You know, studios just over the corridor. Yeah, we'll we see can, what we can borrow. If we can get some, if we can get like a mini ziggurat. Oh, we got a ziggurat in the studio. We had a ziggurat, but I don't know where it ended up. I love ziggurats. They're <laughs> so cool. Um, so if we can get that, I think that'd be a great little centerpiece. <laughs> but either way, like I say, come hell or high water, assuming there is no further developments on the corona thing, I think we're at a position where we can go back to where we were back in December, get yes. our first streamed game. Um, I'm going to push really hard to get it on Facebook as well. Yes, absolutely. So, um, we will see where it actually shows up, but I'm really looking forward to getting this game in. Um, get my butt kicked most likely. So we got we got a lot of new releases coming up. There's uh, yeah, we we've seen our production <laughs> stuff. Yes. So there will be a game every two weeks. Yes, for the next six weeks at least with uh, new releases. We can say that much. Yes, new releases in between everyone. So it's going to be like this: unboxing, taking a look, getting a feel for, fielding questions on if there's rules or something like that we can talk about. We're fielding that, and then the week after we're going to be playing with it. Yeah, which is which is going to be really fun. <laughs> yeah, super awesome. And knowing some of the new releases coming out, I'm really excited oh, to yeah. get some games in with them. And again, not confirming anything, but 
depending on what goes on, I think in late February, early March, we might be doing some Victory at Seas as well, because I yes. think there might be a lull, so I think we can check in some Victory at Seas again there, because some people are asking for that one. And we might we might at some point, you know, get things that we haven't done before, like maybe Cruel Seas or Judge Dread at some point down the line. I would love to get some Dread on. Right, you've got really nice, you've got really nice gang as well. I've only won a couple of painting awards. <laughs> <laughs> only a few. Um... Competition was rigged. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Staff member won it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the, the problem the problem is, Max, entering you in a painting competition is depends cheating. On, depends on the field. Depends on the field. I'm not that good. Um, <laughs> you, you wait. He's going to be like, oh, I'm just going to spray these guys up. He'll come in on Monday and they'll be, you know. Some of them will probably be painted by next week. Yeah. But I don't expect to have the whole force because getting, what, 13 models is doable, but not to, like, a quality I think I'd be happy with. Yeah. And I'm not being like, I'm just And there's so much this, detail like, on yeah, these yeah, that yeah. you want to take. I don't want to brush these because, like, yeah, anyone could slap some paint on and get them done in a week but they'd look bad <laughs> hi I'm anyone <laughs> they'd look bad <laughs> so I'm going to put in a bit of effort they're nice enough to do right oh absolutely if they're, if they're worth doing they're worth doing properly yeah I don't know if there's anything else, much else we need to show really no um, I don't know if we need mini cam going forward no I think uh, mini cam can uh, go away so there's a button for that <laughs> well, there's a button for that and we've helpfully covered the computer in no. um, in cards that's fine right. the mouse was available yeah. I mean, I really. And the other thing as well to note, it's a actually a pretty small box um, in terms of the physical size of it, yeah, which yeah. is nice. It's not you know a hoofing great thing like um, I don't know Stalingrad. <laughs> I was going to say the Soviet starter army for the winters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know it actually is pretty compact, but it is filled. You know, there's yeah. not a lot of empty space in there, which is nice. Um, what have you missed, Miss Intelligent, Mister Toad? Yes, it has all been Mythic Americas <laughs> thus far. You can catch us on YouTube for the catch up. Yes, we're, we're not bringing up mini cam again, <laughs> or, immedi- or immediately um, after this. You once the stream finishes, you can just go and watch. No, it. no, yeah, YouTube's better. YouTube's better. It is. Wait for tomorrow, YouTube. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> it, it'll be it. re-edited and it'll be all fancy and nice. <laughs> uh, and we've got a very special picture as well. Oh God, yeah. Look um, for the thumbnail. I made that myself with Robin. Me and Robin collabed, and we should never be allowed to work together ever. Again. Yeah, that was uh, that was a, a <laughs> dastardly duo as opposed to a dream team. There. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to getting some games in and um, yeah, just picking up other units as well. Yeah, like I say, I've got wolves, I've got tons of wolves. I really want those Jaguar Warriors. I've, I've seen oh, yeah. Studios Jaguar Warriors. I don't think we've shown the new photos of them. I mean, yeah. they've, they've... They're in the rule book, so they're. Oh, yeah, we can talk about them. I don't think the customers have seen yeah. um, the shiny new that we're talking Jaguar about. Jaguar Warriors really and Eagle nice. Warriors just look so beautiful and they do really give me that Total War nostalgia. You get eagles! Yeah, I get eagles. Oh, God. Like I'm playing high elves all over again. Get me out of here. <laughs> oh, your monstrosities are terrifying as well. Yeah, I've not actually ch- properly looked at the Wendigo yet, but... Oof, that's going to be a beast. That's yeah. really nasty The Wendigo stat line. model is stunning. Yeah, I can't wait to get some well, paint on I that. I think one of the coolest things with the monstrosities is there's something we've never done before, mm. which is, for one of our games, a big character unit. Um, and they are huge. The scale is absolutely massive on the monstrosities, which is about right. And, you know, whereas in bolt action, the centrepiece of your army might be a big tank or a big artillery piece on a display base, these monstrosities are 100% designed to be the centrepiece of your army. Oh, God, yeah. They are just such the focal point. Um, they, and they tower. You know, these models are pretty big. Yeah. The like Wendigo in the studio <laughs> cabinet just towers above. I mean... If we're talking about the monsters, let's let's talk about the yes. orders and how that it's comes a really together. mechanic. Because it's something I've not seen before, and I kind of think you could almost do it with tanks in Vault, actually. Right. There's a mod to be done there. So normally, per unit, you get one order dice. It yes. goes in the bag and is you go, hey, I drew a red, you're a red player, you yep. get a dice, you activate a unit, and you go, hey, I'm playing white, I drew a white, I'm going to activate a unit, and you go back and forth like that yep. until the game's done, or at least the turn's done. Um, monsters, they're so big, huge, and terrifying, some of them have up to three dice. Yes. So I've looked, the Cuts of Quarter has one. So I imagine that's because it's a magic user. Yeah. You've got to curb it a little bit. But your um, it was Azar yeah. and your uh, Wendigos have two each. Yeah. So that is t- literally two whole turns. So they can go into combat and they can smash up a unit potentially twice in a single combat phase anyway. I mean, if they're still not done, do it again. Or sprint across the table sprint on twice. two run moves. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think either of those are fast, but that would be 30 inches. Yeah. Assuming you passed both order checks and didn't take any extra damage. Uh... Is any of the mythos from Mythic America taken from the Canadian tribes? North American mythology isn't my massively strong suit. However, I believe Wendigo is of that culture that transcends the modern national borders. 
Possibly, yeah. Um, I do believe Canadian, the Canadian First have Nations Wendigo as well. have a Wendigo or Wendigo equivalent, for example. Yeah. Um, I think this is more based on a general overview because obviously each tribe, you know, many tribes have their own distinct mythology in many cases. Yeah. But there is that. Yeah, next week we might have a better answer because yes. we will have had a chance to read this a bit more in depth. Yeah. Like I so say, we're still, rules wise, we're pretty good. Fluff wise, we're uh, well, it, novice as they can. <laughs> it's the fact that after an hour, well, we have 45 minutes of reading this. Yeah. Um, I feel reasonably confident. I think we could run a game smooth ish. Yeah, I reckon <laughs> me and you between us, we could probably play a game this evening. Yeah, and it wouldn't be one of those games you spend 90% of it with your face buried in a book going, but I think it's like this, I think it's like yeah. this, and no, neither of those works. Yeah. And then the club owner walks up, what are you guys talking about? Just follow D6. Yeah. <laughs> it's clearly like this, and you go, oh. I mean, that, and that's very much the ethos of this game as well. There's yeah. a lot of things in here. There is a concession made for tournament play. You know, there's some pretty robust uh, rules for working out final victories in there. Uh, the rules for terrain are deeper than I expected. Yeah. Well, no, that's going to be a lot of fun to chew through. Oh, absolutely. There is a big old section that's uh, given away to uh, special terrain but and how it all works. The, they also give a streamline option. And the, Yeah, and the core mechanic for terrain is players agree. Yeah. Before the game, you agree what stuff's going to be. Much like when you're playing bolt action, you go around, right, is that ruin or is that building? And then you go, that... what's the difference? And you go, <laughs> how long have you got? Yeah, what's um, the difference? How long have you got and do I have a multi-launcher? Because if not, well... Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very fun game, I think, to string together into some campaign play as well. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's not... Maybe that's true of all games, it's but not, they're just... It's not quite as funner. <laughs> it's not quite as campaign-focused as SPQR. No. SPQR, obviously, is a game built around campaigns, whereas um, Mythic Americas is much more friendly, I would say, to standalone play. SPQR, if you're going to yeah. play it, you want to play five games. Yeah. Um, Mythic Americas, absolutely, you can just well, pick I think up. SPQR, you can pick up and play. Yeah. Whereas this, you can campaign play. Yes, but absolutely. Like that, that kind it's of really encapsulates it. how they work. You can do it with both, but one's designed for one, one's designed for time. Absolutely. And that's a really good way of putting it. Because um, I think the best way to do a campaign in this would be, instead of keeping the same units, having like unit progressions and stuff, which SPQR encourages, yeah. have um, a roster. I was just going to do six games. Yeah. They might not be the same general, they might not be the same units, but just have six games and just kind of tie them all in. Go you know, through every scenario in the book and then just tally it up at the end. And if you're tied, well, I guess you've got to have a tiebreaker, roll yeah. up the scenario and play again. I really <laughs> like that. Yeah. And I think that would be the best way to get your kind of longevity with this. And the other thing is, it's a pretty well balanced, points wise, internally balanced game. So you could just go. Um, I think a good way to get longevity out of this is just play different games to different lists. That old like Warhammer style, like my old club used to do, that you'd play every week. But if your opponent beat you, um, then you're not allowed to change your list next time you play. Those if you beat your opponent, you're not allowed to change your list. Yeah, so the winner can't change. Yeah, so you might go go away, play a couple other people for a few weeks. But when you come back, it's like right, your list is still locked, and now I know how to beat you. And then it's so you know you kind of learn to go to play to your your own strengths, mm. what your strengths are, and also. How to defend against. I, I love that playstyle. I the think army it's a really list, fun one to get with. The there. army list in here as well. Mm -hmm. They're actually pretty streamlined. You know, you're looking at you know yep. maybe eight... What are you doing? Uh, throwing things everywhere. Um, you're looking at maybe eight units yeah. per force. But it doesn't feel lacking. No. You know, it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm going to have to take one of everything. It very much more feels... Okay, I've got a few different and options. I still think here. you're going to want a lot of your cores. Like looking at oh, my for list, sure, for you're sure. You're going to want a lot of Seneca archers, a lot of Mohawk warriors, and just that's your core. A uh, lot of zombies. A <laughs> lot of zombies, and then pop in your Sasquatches, like a little treat on the side. Yeah. You know, if you load it up on too many of them, I think you'd be outnumbered. You'd, you'd really feel it. So I think, yeah, generally in a game, 2,000 points, though, I'd expect every unit to be fielded. Yeah. I'd aim for that person just because then you get the variety as well, which is always fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and that's the other thing. Pretty much every unit feels very distinct. Mm -hmm. if that, you know, every unit has a definite, um, a definite purpose. Yes, thank, thank you. It's not like, oh, well, I could take these, yeah. but these are strictly better. Yeah, what they do, two so flavors of regular infantry. One's yeah. got a special rule, but the other one can take two LMGs. Yeah, yeah I'm going to take two. Yeah, LMGs no, these are all, these all have different <laughs> battlefield roles. So, Stig, um, it is technically a sub game. Um, it is obviously a, um, a derivative of Mythic Americas. Uh, sorry, of um, Warlords of Erewhon, yeah. should I say. This, standalone unto yeah, itself. This is a full standalone rulebook. 
So no further things needed to play. Um, and it's also a collection of new factions. Yeah. Um, so everything in this book, in terms of the factions, is brand new. Yeah. A lot of different things with magic and scenarios oh, yeah. and objectives. Um, yeah, a whole the- new theme thanks to a big card system. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of new gameplay styles, new strategies. As Absolutely. Well. I'm a, I'm a, I didn't used to be a fan of games that had cards. <laughs> and over time, yeah. playing a lot of Necromunda back in the day, I kind of became a fan of it. Yeah. Uh, because it does, on a game that's quite stripped down, um, add flavour. And in a game like this, it's really helpful to make sure that no two scenario, no two games, even if you're playing the same scenarios, yeah. feel the same. Uh, I agree. Which is, again, it, uh, and it's that replay value um, of, you know, well, we just we just played that scenario. Yeah, but we've got completely different secondaries now. Um, and it just keeps it fresh. And uh, I'd actually be quite interested to see, once we've played through all the scenarios in the book, yeah. how it scales with some of the scenarios, not the army lists, but some of the scenarios from original Warlords of Arrow. I'd be very curious as well, just because someone, I don't, we asked, I don't know, did this have Captain Rusk or was this a conversation we had before? But I think we were having this, about conquistadors. Mm. There you go, take humans and knights, merge them together. There you go. There's your conquistadors. Yeah, they, we might do an official release that's a bit more flavoured, has a few more special rules, but if you just wanted to get on and go, I've got models at work as conquistadors. I'm really chewing that pronunciation today. <clears throat> conquistadores. Yes, I'm not going that far, but I can't, can't chew that one out today. But if you wanted to run that, mm. you can use just kind of a hybrid of humans and knights from the main book, port them straight back into this and have yeah. that game. It may, not be, <laughs> may not be the most balanced because it's not yeah. quite designed for that. The authors do say they haven't play-tested Old Warlords versus this. I think the only thing was there might be a little bit of points discrepancy, yeah. but there's nothing and that the, after you play once, you might be able to go, eh, okay, they give, felt a bit give one side 200 points more, give one side 200 points less. Obviously, the other thing is, well, is as you go. they won't have the um, mm-hmm. way. Um, and yeah. you, which, you know, but you can work on that. You can, again, as you say, you can balance that. Yeah, a little bit of home ruling and uh, jerry-rigging. So, Mike, uh, just bought the Irish-American units in the Civil War by Osprey. Like to field Union Confederate Irish units in Epic American Civil War. Would I be best advised to paint up the new plastic generic troops in appropriate colours, or should I wait for later specific miniatures, please? For Irish troops, paint them up. Uh, paint yeah, the originals they up. Pretty standard uniforms. Yeah, they? Irish. The Irish troops were by and large equipped as absolute standard. You know, it's not, for example, like Zouaves yeah. with the special pants and the the jackets. Do they have different colour uniforms? Were they? Still... I honestly don't know. I would imagine facings and colours and yeah. things like that. And obviously it's not like, say, for example, the Michigan Iron Brigade and some of the other units out west. And stuff, the they? Hardy Hats, yeah. yeah. Um, so they look I'm, like firemen. They do. <laughs> um, smoothbore muskets. Smoothbore muskets aren't modelled separately. Wow, Og Dog, wow. Um, but, um, but we worked really hard putting the rifling inside those at yeah. epic scale. Just wait to tell Bill that it, all those days with the drill were wasted. I'm not appreciated. I hope you're happy, Og Dog. Um, no. Um, I wish we did hire a person to do that. Right. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Warlord Games. Um, I'm the official m- a barrel driller. Yeah. Um, Stig, curious. Does this mean that we're moving towards Erewhon Two? I'd say probably not. No. This, I think, less evidence of uh, Erewhon Two. More that Erewhon is a system that kind of works as your building block. Yeah, absolutely. You can build a ton of stuff out of it. We're adding new rules, new scenarios, stuff like that, and obviously new units. Um, you can make whole new games. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see if this wasn't the first... Oh, sorry, the, if it wasn't the only expansion. Mm-hmm. Maybe it won't be Mythic Americas next time. Maybe we'll see something specific fantasy-related or a specific era of right, actual history, yeah. Mythic or something like that. I imagine this is going to be uh, Erewhon's new lease of life as the kind of everything system because it's kind of already built as like that. Much like bolt action is with K forty seven. Exactly. Yeah. K forty seven doesn't mean there's like a bolt action version three. Yeah. K forty seven is built off the framework of bolt action. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I think Warlords of Era One is such an adaptable game. It's already a toolbox, and I think some people don't play it as much because it's that. And some mm. people like they're competitive and they're really structured play where everyone's quite loose literally build whatever scenario you want and it will probably work. Whereas this is going to be... This is filling that desire, I think. And assuming it sells well, and I think early forecasters are selling pretty well. I'm really happy with this book. I'd be more than happy to see more of this. I could see um, Warlords of Erewhon being 
yeah. are kind of everything system because it's kind of what it is. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things as well. When you read a book, you know, mm-hmm. I kind of go, oh, obviously I didn't pay for this. You know, we work here. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, there's got to be some perks for um, you lot having to see our ugly faces <laughs> every evening. Um, but no. Um, every evening. Wait, you don't watch, you don't watch our streams back on repeat to remember what? No, we and I'd hope like? they don't either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like I, I look at this book and go, I would be very, very happy if I just walked into a game store, yeah. had it pitched to me a little bit by the owner, and I'd bought this. There you go. I know we got some owners in the chat. There like, you, go. I, you know, please, your customers today. I would <laughs> be, I would be very satisfied taking. You know, and it's not an enormously chunky book. Yeah, but it feels thicker than it is. You know, you get some rule books that are absolutely massive. And you actually read it, and there's 20 pages of rules, and the rest 400 is... pages of fluff, and there's a couple of pages of art, and then you go, wow, I paid 50 bucks for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> with, with this. I mean, it's like, is this 20 or 25? Uh, I can't that's actually a really good question. I don't know. I didn't even check the system for this one. I just picked up one of these boxes. Like I said, this I know is 70. Comes with all what you've seen. All you need is to just play a, box, a game out of the box, and it comes with this. So if you wanted to jump in... This is going to be the best starting point. Obviously, if you've got models that you think you could use or you just want to kind of dip your toe in before committing, you can just buy the rulebook, but this, or even the collector's edition. The collector's edition comes with your Sasquatch Warriors. Ah, 25, your, 25 quid on the web store, thank you, Old Dog. There we go. Uh, your Clalokan uh, Bound, Marauders. Uh, Bound Dead, isn't it? Bound Dead's the infantry, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, it is. Yes, yeah, so your Marauders. It comes with basically the big guys, but not your really big guys, like the Sasquatch and the Quartal and the Azar. Um comes with all that so the, the collector's edition is really good if you can bump it but this is yeah. nice affordable gets your games in um, um, for reference that is 70 um, English uh, yeah. pounds obviously I don't know what it is in money dollar bills yeah you should be able in uh, about 100 110 if we're being topical with uh, cyberpunk uh, euro bucks um, that's the official currency um, <laughs> a bad game <laughs> yeah. so we've got uh, Michael um, would you recommend any other units for the American Civil War that are like basically the same as the plastic sprues, just different coloured uniforms? One that springs to mind for me, which I've been doing, mm-hmm. US coloured troops. Oh yeah. Um I've seen it, a few people doing that. Tobias was uh, yeah. paying for them as well. Um I mean they're they're hard as nails, they're absolute quality mm-hmm. unit in Glory Hallelujah. Um, and they, again, that, that is literally you paint the skin a different colour, the right you paint the skin the appropriate colour for them. Because it's not like I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> ACW is far from my expertise because it wasn't like Napoleonic where every unit had different uniforms generally. The differences mm. were based off what the supply depot had. So it might be a unit made in sixty two might be different from a sixty five unit because of kit upgrades, what was available at that time. Absolutely. But there wasn't like your region, it wasn't like your Kentucky guys had this particular uniform and your Pennsylvania guys had exactly this uniform and there's a few exceptions but generally the Union wear blue, the Confeds wear nutmeg or brown. I'll say uh, grey. Yeah. uh, Right? Absolutely. absolutely (laughs) Kind of. You know, there's not that tradition. We have moved past the tradition of regimental facings. Yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Because they did it in America way before they did it in Europe. Yeah. What you're more likely to see. Yeah, exactly as you've said. Because the variation. They still had uh, regional uniforms in 1913. Yes. And like some of them went into World War One wearing regional uniforms, yep. not Falco, which is nuts. Well, but you can tell, I mean, you can tell the difference between things like Saxons and Hessians and things like that in yeah. the First World War. Oh, I'm talking like they wore bright green yep. with like red, yep. everything. And like. That's mental. Most of them by that point were Feldgrau, but off topic. <laughs> cool, though. <laughs> Stumpy, we've got a fellow reenactor, always good to see. Um, I'll scroll up in a bit, I think we've lost A single army can have several dozen, dozen different guns and types of ammo, absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, it's a case of um, absolutely, as you say... I started a currency argument by saying bucks instead of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oops. <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly as you say, Stumpy. It yeah. is a case of there's so much variation. And the good news is, at epic battle scale, you don't have to worry. I keep looking at the thing, because we've got a smaller screen, so it's pixelated a little bit. You look like you're wearing chainmail. <laughs> I, I, I keep looking at it, because with the neck roll as yeah. well, because a lot of people wearing chainmail wear those yeah. to stop it rubbing. I'm like, why has Marcus got mail on? In fairness, I've got... <laughs> I feel underdressed. In fairness, I've got a whole... You've, got, you've still got a mail shirt at home, haven't you? I've got a shirt, a hauberk, and a trashed one that needs throwing out because it got rusted I don't know if I've got a male shirt um, at mine next week do you want to bring no I don't because we're doing a game we need to stand up for an hour oh yeah (laughs) fine (laughs) later after a day at work Um, yeah good enough for 90s Robin Hood films yeah it's the Monty (laughs) it's the Monty Python um, trick I'm just going to spray this uh, we're only allowed to be shown in the background though (laughs) (laughs) the principals up front get the uh, of course we're talking about uh, Charlie and uh, yes (laughs) Ollie (laughs) um 
Um, the, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We but, hadn't seen those. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, no, it's it's chilly. It's very chilly here. Actually. Yeah, we got to have a window open because of the uh, COVID, the works. environment. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's all right. We had the heating on before we came in, so it's uh, not freezing. Hence the hat. <laughs> yeah, it, is a, it is a big. Jo- I thought you were just wearing the hat to gloat. To gloat. <laughs> oh yeah. No. After. Uh, yeah. Uh, ten minutes left. Then we can do that. <laughs> oh, oh, good, oh good. Stay on target. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if anyone has any questions about yeah anything specific about this or all the releases, what we got coming out, what we got happening, um, feel free to ask. I know some of you have the rule book, so uh, if any of you have been reading it, um, what are you excited for? Like, uh, what are you yeah. guys playing? Have you painted anything yet? What are your findings? I've seen the first few painted examples start popping up in the Facebooks, and there have been some gorgeous ones. Mm. Uh, I wish I had the guy's name. I'm going to ask him if I can show some of his when he's done, because I think they're still at the work in progress phase. Yeah. Have you seen the guy who's got this really fancy basis where he's covered it in foliage? And yes, stuff like that? yes, I did. His painting's amazing. When he's got a warband, I'm going to ask him, can I show it here? Because it is lovely. I'm really glad that you picked up on him, because I saw that at yeah. about three o'clock this morning. <laughs> I'm like, I need to tag Matt. Because we have a sensible sleeping pattern at this company. Well, I blame the NHL. Um, <laughs> no, um, and I saw it. I was, <laughs> I saw it. I was like, I need to tag Max in that, and then completely forgot. Yeah. Uh, no, he's been posing pretty regular because he's doing work in progress shots. And it, it I just think he's done some really nice stuff as well. Yeah, I think I remember. I remember seeing him and like, hey, he's doing that as well. Possibly shit, I don't know. But. They, I, think, I think it was black. Right? They, yeah. Um, their stuff's gorgeous. I'm going to ask him if I can show some of it here. Um, and yeah. So yeah, like I say, um, oh, there we go. Any news on the um, release date for the victory at C? Yeah, there was an update on that. Where yes. are we? March 13th. March 13th. <laughs> so uh, at one point, I think we were. It was January, January February. February. Yeah. March 13th. Couple issues with our supplier. So a little bit of have sausages made. A lot of war game companies in the Nottingham area share the same publishers. A lot of them go for Osprey and stuff like that. They're all oh, a little bit... Joe um, Falchetto is uh, yelling, no, 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 no. Wow. Uh, that, cool, that, it changed in two hours. That's, that's a record. That's our boss, let's see. Um, um, cool, so eyes on the chat. Maybe it is February 13th. Yes. But either way, there's been a couple delays, oh, but Feb- we're still working Mid-February on release of Victory at Sea. We're getting... That's why we looked at um, February and said March. Okay, cool. Um, so, <laughs> mid-February. There we go. So the announcement on the email was incorrect. Yes, it is mid February, <laughs> and that we're getting there. Victor at Seas Rule, but so there's a couple of delays with the um, uh, printers. They've all got it sorted now. Um, do you want to fill? Because I can show yes. it off. Actually. Yes, actually. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, a chance to take one on mystery boxes. Mystery boxes will be leaving us basically this coming week. I've seen uh, quite a few of them have um, already gone through the courier processing, which means they are literally ready to be handed to the courier and shipped out. So mystery boxes. Moving very, very, very soon. And, yep, some people already receiving them. So I think we started at the very end of last week. Uh, long story short, there was some delays in getting them all made. Um, simply blame COVID for not letting us have enough people in the same room. Uh, hello to Spindleshanks88 from Hereford. Lovely bit of the country. Uh, I have, the only bit of Hereford I've been to is... What's I want the main to say, city? Fun? What's Hereford. the main city? It's definitely not been them. Um, it's, um, no, the, the only bit of Hereford I've been to, I must admit, having driven through it a lot, um, is the Big Asda. Um, oh, go on. Yes, look at that. So, we got them. It's thick. It's yep. a lot of pages. That's a lot of pages. Um, I was just talking to the boss next door. We should expect to see these start shipping to overseas locations in the next week. Sweet. I don't think this week, I think he means... The coming Monday kind yeah. of thing. But um, the idea is get it to the people out in America, Australia, far field, as early as possible so that then they might get it around the same time as the UK customers. Possibly not Australia. That's a really long way, yeah. unfortunately. But it's here. It's enormous. Everyone who's been asking, have there been rules for this? Yes. Almost certainly it's in yes. here. Radar. Um, submarines. Ships that were never built. Night fighting. The yeah. lot. It, there's so much content in here before you even get to the um, ships. I think I, we might have to mess with our thing. We might actually want to get a game mm. when this comes out. We'll see what we can squeeze in. The last time I saw a catalogue of it's, ships... It's enormous. The, la- the, last time, the last time I saw a catalogue of ships this big, I was at school doing my classics A-level, reading the Iliad. Yeah, and I mean, um, there's like tons of stuff. Honestly, as well, one thing that catches me with this book, the amount of photography has gone into this. It's really, really rich, mm. like, just to read. There's so much stuff. We're not doing a proper review of this one. I just wanted to show it off, really. Yeah. It's coming. 
It's coming mid-February this month. Yeah. If you haven't already pre-ordered it, consider it. And I think we've still got the Admiralty copies left if you want something a little bit special, a little bit limited edition, and we'll yeah. be uh, I need to get my the plush on. extras, like the, uh, the book ribbon. The book ribbon. Which, uh, you pulled to fire a gun. Did you see that? The Doge of Venice used to have a Bible with a gun in it, oh. where you pull the uh, bookmark and it would fire it. <laughs> uh, yes, Og Dog, there are the Nelson class. Um, there are also, I believe... Some of the N class and G class never built in there. So if you never mind the 16 inch, you can go 18 inch if you want. There we go. But we're not looking at this one properly today. We'll do an episode. Uh, Spindle Shank, any news on new British Army plastic troops? Not a Scooby Doo, I'm afraid. We'll do them at some point in the yeah. future for certain. They're one of our oldest kits. They are going to get remade. Yep. Other than that, not a clue. Um, and the same goes. Um, Intelligent Mr. Toad, any more news on upcoming Bolt Action and Epic ACW releases? Yes, we've got lots of them coming. <laughs> There's a studio down the hallway. There is. a lot of stuff, but we can't talk about <laughs> it. That feels like we're rubbing it in. Should we go look at some of the new releases after this? <laughs> That's what we were doing before we <laughs> like, Literally 15 minutes before. Um, M5? Yeah, the M5's uh, March. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> M5 and the M5 platoon, if you've ordered that one. Nice new plastic kit. Uh, we flashed that on uh, stream the other day. Yes. That one's coming out in March. Very nice kit, actually. Um, I haven't built mine yet. I'm, I'm, I'm stewarded out. I've done too many stewards in my life. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah. Maybe I should build one as a um, M8. I haven't done an M8 yet. But but I don't the, think they were... Build it as a recce. You should play Brits. You see Johnny... Johnny wears thread on that. It was so cool. Yeah, it was cool. Hey, you know, if we did do new plastic but bits... How am I going to get fixed machine guns on a Stuart? <laughs> and I don't think I can send an M8 to, to Russia, so no, maybe later. They'd send it back. They sent back the um, Chaffees. Really? Yeah, they hated them. Wow. Wait, is it Chaffee? M18. That's not Chaffee, Hellcat. Is it? Hellcat. Yeah, we sent the uh, Hellcats back. So did we. We said they were rubbish. Well, in fairness, we had um, M10 with a 17-pounder. Not Achilles, apparently. Uh, if you call it Achilles, apparently all the real tread historical nerd treadheads will cry because it wasn't. It was the uh, M1017 Pounder SPG. Uh, well, every name's post-war, so yeah. <laughs> what you're gonna they, do? They just called them tank. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Uh, to be honest, if it's coming through the under the underbrush at you, I don't <laughs> think you care. Very if it's much. bulletproof, it's a tank. Yeah. Uh, what was the Achilles then? Um, it's a modern as far or like a post-war name yeah. for an M10 tank destroyer with the 90 mil taken out and a 17 pounder put in. M10 was the 76. Was it 76? M18 was the 90, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it was an M10 with the 76 taken out. Sorry. What was it? And a 17 pounder. Either way, it's no, M10. it was the M36 that had the 90. Weird. Yeah, they came in really late in the war. So it's whatever. Everything in America was running that 76. Yeah. Which was an objectively better gun than the 17 pounder. Ooh. Yeah, nobody likes that one, but it's true. Well, I mean, in um, fairness, yeah, I mean, it's a <laughs> better target acquisition, better long range thing, and it's a tank killer. It wants to be yeah. a long range acquisition. Thank you, uh, Ogdog. AT gun, seventeen pounder on self propelled mount M10. Um, in that wonderful, very British style of naming thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gun, making tanks blow up for the use of. <laughs> um, yeah, we do love them. the British Army loves commas. British language loves commas. Um, yeah, they always seem to cause an argument whenever they're brought up on uh, Twitter, though. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is it is absolutely an M10 with a 17-pounder gun. It Which just... like how the Shermans practically anachronistic. Really? Nobody called them Shermans in World War II. Everyone called them M4s. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I genuinely didn't know that. So many of the names we give tanks and stuff were post-war when people were trying to jazz it up when they were writing their memoirs. Mm. I, I was really uh... strongly impacted it. Basically everything. If it's got a nickname, it's probably just actually called an M4, an M10, an M18. Yeah. Or... The tank. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the one that seems... I need a squadron of tanks now. The one that the seems to be accurate um, will be the Honeys for the Stuarts. That's one that seems to have been in use in the war. Quite possibly. Um, but but that... a lot of them, like I say, yeah. That, that's what people mean when they say it's uh, anachronistic. Yeah. Like, I've heard. Not that I'm an expert, but that's why I keep getting told. But... Well, one day we'll get uh, Peppingford on to do an interview. <sighs> If we must. <laughs> It'll be a slow news week. <laughs> there we go. And uh, Spindle Shank's name is in uh, Warlords of Everyone in the Thanks section. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh, having we, a look at it. We do appreciate everyone that works on all of I don't. I think it might be original Warlords of Everyone. Oh, okay. But we, yeah. do, we do really appreciate everyone that, you know... We're in this on one. Books. Are we? Yeah, do you know that? No. Yeah, we're in this one. Um... <laughs> Dope. Where is the... 
Yeah, thanks to Max Aston first, and you're somewhere. There! Yeah. Nice, I'm between Colin <laughs> and Derek. <laughs> awesome! Yeah. So uh, we did actually input on this one a tiny bit. I, thought it was I didn't think we justified getting credits, to be honest, but I'm, gl- I'm glad I did, but I honestly did think Darren would have um, told me not a chance after all the badgering <laughs> I gave him in the pub. <laughs> but literally, we went to the... Um, I don't know. Derek? The, no, Darren. Oh, Darren. Yeah. Um, and we went to... We so were, we went to the pie shop? Yes. Yeah, and I just fair. didn't shut up about. <laughs> yeah, because you got look, you. Kn- <laughs> so we went to, this is obviously way before the uh, virus and obviously mm. stuff like that. We had two um, uh, rows of benches, kind of thing, where mm. we were eating. And on one side, there was me, Robin, and I think it was Marco. Yeah. And we were having a great time. And then we went out and had tea, have a great time. Meanwhile, Darren was sandwiched in by you and Lorenzo. We were just there like. So, how about this? <laughs> you just kept talking. So we were talking about this, that, and everything. A lot of talk on movies and heavy metal. Yeah. And we were getting a little bit tipsy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dan was just there like, stop talking about boats, this is my day job. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like boats. <laughs> um, but no, that's really good. I need to pick up a copy, actually. Yeah, do it. I need to get myself, downstairs. I actually need to get myself the collector's edition. I'm grabbing a copy of a book after this as well. Oh, what are you getting? Uh, train. Train. Oh, yes. Book. That's uh, on pre-orders now. A couple of people are asking. Very good book. I've already had a flick through it. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm going to buy a copy. No worries, Spindle Shank. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to everyone for joining us, actually. Yeah, that means it's been a pretty uh, active uh, yeah. session. Shall we, uh, myself. shall we kind of knock on to starting Amnesty? Or Yeah, you can if you want. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, getting to the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. Uh, it is Amnesty time. Ask us any questions you want at all. They don't need to be related to what we're discussing. They don't even need to be related to Warlord. <laughs> they can be deep and philosophical or... They haven't been yet. They, they, no, no. <laughs> Which is good, because neither of us are deep or philosophical. Well, it's not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, only time I, the only time I get to... 4am after too many alcohols. 4am after I've watched the Wings lose again. <laughs> and I ask myself the eternal question of, why? Why? <laughs> why? Why does Anthony Mantha not backcheck? Um, Man has too many Gladius. No worries, um, Mike. No worries. Very much appreciated. Um, if they've turned up, awesome. If not, um, <laughs> hopefully they'll turn up soon. Um, yeah, more than happy to get those sorted for you. So, who makes your halfling? So that was collab with TT Combat, yes. and we haven't been able to get a resupply of those for ages, thanks to the virus. In a nutshell, yeah, uh, they are based on the other side of the Atlantic. So there's been some supply issues. Them supplying their uh, own customers, their local trade customers, who they can get stuff to far easier, and getting it us to it in a quantity that makes it worth justifying the expensive postage costs and stuff like that. So at some point we might get them back in. I'm really not sure. Um, yeah. But at the moment, it's basically we're clearing the shelves, and once it's gone, it's at least temporarily gone, possibly gone for good. I can't actually say specifically. <laughs> uh, oh God, could be worse. You could support the flames. No, they win. They win games occasionally. Uh, uh, Ian, uh, Les Ian 2020, uh, no problem at all. Glad it helps. <laughs> uh, um, get, get through a lot of these things in a week, so I can't remember the specifics, but... <laughs> did we find any pictures of the cruelty stuff I've sent you? Yes, I did. Um, uh, yeah, you sent, you tagged me in one. Yeah. Um, last week we showed some of the mics, but it wasn't on... Yeah, we got two. the wrong mic. So uh, just to prove it, I think I've still got them saved. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Um... Yeah, let's uh, show off. Oh, I've not looked at this for Let's ages. hope we've got... There we go, there's some... Yeah, so I think that was... Uh, right, Mike. Mike. We're not going to show all of them, just to... Is this you, we did Mike? it last week. Please tell us we've now we, got we, the right mic. Too many mics. So bear with. There's a lot of different yeah, image files, because some of them are ones that Robin took, yeah. and they're really high with death. There we go. Yeah, so that was some of Mike. Showed it last week, so we weren't holding it for too long. Please tell me this is the right yeah, mic. Um, <laughs> God, we had that problem before the stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, oh, Actually, that's, that's something I wanted to bring up. Um, oh, not Mike. No, oh, I tagged wow. you in I have tagged you in the other Mike's ticket. <laughs> Don't worry. We got too many Mike's. Man. I Mike, I know who you are. Okay. I promise. He doesn't, I do. Um now um So I've been dealing with the other Mike who isn't currently on the stream. Yep. Yes. And I've okay. been dealing with not the mic we're currently seeing no. in pink. Uh, so I know who Intelligent Mr. Toad Stewart yep. is, and he's nothing to do with He has a mic on. I, I knew that he was <laughs> separate from that one. So there's a different mic who isn't currently pink mic. Correct. Um, wow. Henceforth, you will be solid mic, and the other mic will be liquid mic. Okay. Um, I thought that was mic 7 7 for some reason. <laughs> it's, uh, we, we, look at a lot of, we, we speak to a lot of people, so I do apologise. Intelligent Mr. Toad, if you could erase one Warlord uh, model from history, which one would it be, and what would you replace it with? Is that a bit too cheeky? It's cheeky, but... Oh, it's, that's hard to give an answer. 
Um, yes, Mike, you're Mr. Pink now. Um, ooh. Can I say a blister? You can, yes. Pixies. Yeah. Um, pixies. pixies, and if you don't know why, pixies. check Pixies out on our web store. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I would be, it would be Pixies, and I would replace them with... No, I'd replace them with, but those models upset me. <laughs> they're nice. They, 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 look, like they look at you in a strange yeah, way. They're not for me. Uh, I'd be Pixies, and I would replace them. This with is basically a, asking us if you could have anything yeah. sculpted. With an, you, what would it be? Um, ah, either a late medieval command. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, like Wars of the Roses or Hundred Years' War. Or a new British officer team. I like the current one. I like cool. I like the current one, but I'd like another one. Yeah. Uh, just that's possibly a bit more war yeah. So a bit more of a junior officer as opposed to kind of a, a company commander kind of vibe. Okay. Um, Ogdog, which battle are you most looking forward to playing in Epic ACW? Uh, first bull run. Uh, <laughs> Good first, question. First bull run. <laughs> first bull run for me. Uh, get right in at the start. I don't know, but there was one my uh, partner was telling me about, where the Confederates were holding out in a fortress, mm. so they tried to undermine it. She knows about this because she's got a local museum where they've got a, a display about it. Mm-hmm. They were trying to like besiege it for ages, and some people were like. Um, the, the Union were trying to besiege it. They had some miners before they were soldiers. Mm-hmm. Like, we just dig under it. Let us dig under it. And after a while, they were like, Haha, yeah, sure, go, up, go for it. And a week later, they had like half of a functional tunnel. They were like, oh, this will actually work. Cold Harbour, I think. Uh, no, it definitely wasn't that. Uh, Petersburg? No. Nope. It'll come back. <sighs> Is this the one that leads to the Battle of the Crater? Yeah. Battle of the Crater. That, I know it as the Battle of the Crater. Yeah, maybe it was Petersburg. I know it was the Battle of the Crater, now you said it. And uh, mm. yeah, that um, they got completely trapped. It was mm. Petersburg, okay. Um, yeah, she was telling me about that. That would be a really fun one to do because that battle was hell on earth. Yes. <laughs> um, how could you use the revolver ocelot in your idea, in your um, analogy? Oh, God. Uh, you want it? Um, there you go. <laughs> um, can it be the end? Yes. The end dies halfway through his scene. I want to be the end. Can uh, you be the guy with the bees? Yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> um, Amish Stig, any updates on the move and ticket backlog? So the move is going... Basically done. Yeah, we've got one, like, half of a department Have to we? move in. Yeah, trad resin. I thought that was basically done. Uh, okay. like I, said, it's like, I think it's, like, half left. Yeah. So that the move is almost entirely done, and happy to report the ticket backlog... Basically back to normal. Basically back to normal. Um, we had quite a busy weekend. Yeah, a bit busy at the moment, but like not uh, like, um, oh my lord, what yeah. is happening busy? It's just kind of, hey, it was a busy weekend. <laughs> yeah, we had a busy, which is to be expected. <laughs> we'll Obviously, it's payday, control. first of yeah. the month, you know, new oh, deals. Oh man, I had so many calls on Friday giving us money. It's always good. Um, and yeah, the ticket backlog is basically waiting time on a ticket, maximum of two days at the moment. Two, really. maybe three. Yeah. Three um, if you're unlucky. But we are basically... Three if you've got a really difficult thing that we need to talk to other departments about. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, good work. Uh, good work there, Mike. Getting your first bolt action stuff painted up as well. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, keep the questions coming. Oh, which stories. vehicles? I want to know. Yes, yes, Mike. I bet one of them would be uh, your uh, pack... 10 uh, SDKF221, the one you get in Band of Brothers, I'd be willing to bet. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe a Sherwin? That's a nice, easy jumping point. Yep. Also, I want to ask the audience a question. Has the audio been any better lately? Because we're mm. trying out a slightly different microphone setup, and we're going to try another another one in a week or two, hopefully next week. Um, but we had some feedback that the sound quality in the last one wasn't fantastic. Yeah. So we got a couple things set up, and the audio should be better today. Nice. Um, Maybe not the most high quality in the world, but yeah, we're still working there. I mean, it was still in our first year. Yeah. Uh, best, <laughs> best audio so far. Wow, the lapel mic. This is, for reference, it's a tiny little... I really little... want to lean into it and do like a really uncomfortable thank you. No. You're welcome. No. <laughs> um, do not. Um, it's a... Yeah, it's just a tiny... Li- Stop caressing the microphone. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's this big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have... Wait, where's the, other, where's the other one? I don't know where the other one is. Oh, oh yeah. That one's broke. Yeah, so the initial plan, we thought we were going to be... Uh, uh, Haggard, I think that's going to be more internet on our end that's causing out of sync, so I, I don't know how we're going to work yeah. with that until we can um, so buy better So originally, internet. we thought we were going to be all professional. <sighs> yeah, we, 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 we had that, but it's actually broke. We changed the batteries and everything. It just doesn't work, which so, is really annoying, which is one of the reasons so, we were so late Instead, we've got this. <laughs> And I think that's probably actually got better sound quality because this is kind of cheap. I think when it was new. Please don't waggle um, it around like that. It's very disconcerting. <laughs> um, yeah, it, terrible. 
Piece of junk. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely rubbish. It didn't uh, even work. Like, it wouldn't even show up on our system. So, but we do have a new mic coming. Um, yeah, in um, the next couple of weeks with the li- the joys of getting stuff in. Yeah. Um, so well, it's a hand me down, so it shouldn't yeah. be too long. Just next time, some the right person's in. So hopefully, I can bully him into coming in <laughs> sometime this week and dropping it off. I've actually, I've actually had lots of um, Amazon deliveries turning up recently. My, my rudder pedals for my oh, yes. um, my sim my sim setup um, turned up. Um, so now I get to spend a million years setting everything up and mapping all the control- mapping all, right, all the controls. Down. Yeah, please stop fiddling. fiddling. Um, but uh, yeah, I normally paint all day. Like yeah. whenever I've not got something to like paint, I'm like. <laughs> right, so I'm nice, Mike uh, Stug Three and Puma. Yeah, you're a big fan of both of those vehicles. Aren't I am. You uh, particularly like the Puma. I uh, Puma's are great. Puma's the best armored car in bolt action. Like there's hands down. Yeah, Staghound sure Stag A. Staghound A. Maybe. Um, I mean, because the Staghound's what me light tank, medium AT gun, yeah. wheeled doesn't have dual directional steering. Yeah, 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 um, it. Has recce. <laughs> uh, the Puma, mm. obviously light tank, med- um, l- no medium yeah, AT gun, medium. pack uh, fifty, isn't it? Yeah, well, pack fifty equipment. Yeah, wheels, uh, dual directional steering. Hitler's buzz saw on the machine gun. Um, <laughs> it, Staghound has two MMG. Yeah. They're, they're much for muchness, but the Puma's cooler because they built like three of them. <laughs> uh, I, hey, the I, Americans have a Jeep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> With a machine gun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> a strictly mo- the strictly uh, more efficient um, machine gun. Uh, oh, yeah. Machine yeah, gun yeah. oh, God, yeah, yeah. That's why my army has one of those and three machine guns. A conflict mouse X with a rail gun. Interestingly, uh, Sam from our store, HQ store, yeah. has a ridiculous... He's conf- got three, hasn't he? He's got three mouse. Meese. Moose. Moose. He's got three moose. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> it's like Canadian counting. Um, but uh, he's got three moose, uh-huh. and uh, one of them has two of the rail guns. Yeah, and he's got three, um, three. Yag Tiger, but it's the rail guns. Yep. And nice conversion that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's why you can't get hold of a mouse. Sorry, Sam bought them all. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the mouse. Uh, it's basically, I think Skytrex need to redo something on the kit. Yeah. So um, we've been out of those for a while. We're waiting for them to come back. So obviously, Skytrex. Nice had when a, they show up. Skytrex <laughs> had a really rough time. Uh, over Skytrex also doing all our resins for this. Yes, which is another reason for the hold up there. For anyone who's actually already received them, because I think it's the Sasquatch and the Tall Oak and Marauders were already yes. out. Gorgeous resins. I don't know if you've seen them hands on. No, I really, might have to go downstairs really nice and grab some resins. If got any. Um, so I think that's another reason they've been working to focus on fulfilling new releases before uh, re-upping old releases. Because I think the BT Seven's been out for a while as well. That's yeah, one that I look at as a Soviet player. That stuff they make and the Buffaloes. That's why a couple mm. of our US MC bundles, bundles are well. off as well because we can't get those. They'll come back eventually. Actually, going back Ooh. to what model, if we could replace the Pixies, and it will be the <laughs> yeah. Pixies, with um, any model, uh, I think it would be the BT-7 with tank torpedoes. Oh, I saw that. It's horrible. <laughs> I despise that thing. I love it. It's so stupid. Everyone else is, you know, let's, you know, the, Cali- the Calliope or the Calliope, however you want to say it. You know, that's fairly sensible. Um, for a given value of sensible, yeah. Um, the Germans like sticking um, Nebelwerfer, yeah, the Stukazufus, and um, the uh, Nebelwerfer on the back of the two five. What the armored up two five one, yeah. Um, and then the Russians are no two giant rockets that look like something from a fifties uh, cartoon. They tried it on a Sherman. Yeah, yeah. There's a show. Oh yes, the tulip. Yeah, yeah. That thing's hideous. But they were a little bit more sensible than those. The tank torpedoes. Wait, is the tulip the one with the Calliope on top? No, the tulip is the Calliope is the big yeah. multi launcher. The tulip is the two turret side rock. Is the turret side rocket? Yeah, they were huge, man. They, they were, were Sturm Tiger rockets. Not as big as the tank torpedoes, though. <laughs> they're, they're all pretty ridiculous. Mm. Oh, I mean, there's a reason none of them are in the game. Yeah, because they were never used in combat. Oh, the Calliope, I think. Is, I think. Calliope and th- that's a multi launcher. Yeah. Tulips in game? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, that's one. so dumb. We What's used to we used to sell them. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. Really? We used to sell a conversion kit for it. You can still get them. I think. Um, <laughs> what? Speak to the metal guys. They'll cast them up for you. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, three. They were three inch rockets. Um, wow. So I think it's like one shot he big. You know, like super heavy anti tank or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, super dumb. Brit army. I've got an idea. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Add that on a land mattress. Um, oh, I hate that match. Yeah. Death to multi launchers. <laughs> <laughs> Max, he took aim at Tiger Fear, now he's coming for your multi launchers. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I, love, I love that it's my fault, Tiger Fear, now. 
Max is <laughs> Max is going to ban multi launches yeah. and mandate that everyone takes an MMG team. Uh, they should. They everyone should. should. But, yeah. Uh, when I write Bolt Action 3 <laughs> <laughs> um, coming out next Mr. Week. Toad I'd love to see some Panzer Lair troops uh, well there's a new army list for them yeah a lot of people would um, I think they're a really good idea um, that's a I wouldn't be surprised to see it but I've not heard it's in the works yeah. kind of suggestion um, we just are spitballing here because yeah, you, you've seen how much Warlord likes to produce um, plastic Germans what's left <laughs> you know no genuinely like, yeah. what's left that needs updating because uh, all like the uh, they're still nice enough. I'd like a new Blitzkrieg kit because yeah, I, I play I, Germans I, I and think I like Panzer would be the obvious next step because we've not done it yet. It's distinct, yeah, and we don't currently fill that niche. You could get a couple extra things in, like uh, camo smocks yeah. and stuff, which we don't currently do I enough want of. More plastic um, Zeltbarns and smocks over greatcoats. Yeah, stuff like that. Is... Stuff like that. You could get combine that into a layer kit. So I think the layer could basically catch everything we've not already done. And then basically for the German army, it's every couple of years we could just kind of go. Let's make some new stuff. Yeah. Like, let's remake an existing one. Yeah. So I think Panzerleo is definitely one I'd expect to see. Even do them see. as a German veterans kit. Yeah, yeah. Which would be really cool. Let's sell them as legs. That's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the jackets would be the big thing. Is Katusha in-house or out-of-house? It's in-house, isn't it? Uh, in, I think, yeah. Yeah, because it's all resin and all metal. Uh, yeah, they're not out of stock, are they? Um, I don't they know. They might be still out of stock from the Black Friday deals. Yes. I don't uh, know. And obviously metal and resin have just kind of been in the process yeah. of moving, so it takes them a little while to metaphorically and physically spin back up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I yeah. I need to paint mine. I haven't got around to it. Yeah, how many have you got? I thought you had a couple. <laughs> Two, but bought back in August, so it's, I'm not the reason they're out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, need, you still need to do your Bronicator. factor. You still need to do your Bronicator with the Katusha. I ain't got a Bronicator, I ain't He's buying one. Not till next year. Not until next year. Unless you want to buy me one for my birthday. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the problem is, like, if I buy you a Bronicator for your birthday, that's pretty... done within a week and I'll have to make a scenic board to house it. Yes. Uh, and then you'll cry. <laughs> but also, it's pretty expensive and I'm terrified as to what to think you'd get me on the same budget. A mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, they are the same price, aren't they? the same price, yeah. Yeah. Like five pound difference. Um, have you got T... Th- we were talking about your lack of a T35 Yeah, no, today. I don't have a T35. Um, I have a T28. It's not painted yet. Um... But yeah, no T35. I think it's because the T35 is utterly useless. Whereas what? the T28 is actually quite a good tank for its day. What have you got on your tanks still to paint bench? It'll be a fun one to compare. T34, 85. Are we including vehicles? Yeah, yeah vehicles. Is it just yeah. you? Yeah. Um, Studebaker. Yep. Two Katushas. MMG truck. You know, the quad MMG oh. truck the Rus- the Russians. Yep. Cheapest unit in the game for what it does. Absolutely oh, yeah. broken. Uh, uh, no, not not the not the uh, Troika. <laughs> no, hang on, hang on. The more expensive thing. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I'm actually doing right for me. Oh, <laughs> unless we count my Africa Corps. Um, <laughs> we probably should count those. Um, loads of odd stuff like an ambulance that I got from Perry's an SDK ambulance I got from us. Yeah, the two five four I got from Perry's. Grife. Rife I got from Perry's um Crad uh Cratch? No, what's it called? Ken Crad. Yep. Um and <laughs> a, the Jeep. Kubelwagen. Yes. And a, a beep, you know, the big yep. Jeep yep. for the Americans that's been calliuped into a thirty seven mil M six <laughs> and a deuce. Uh, so <laughs> and that's before infantry. <laughs> uh from just for vehicles for me. Panzer three, uh, which is being built into a flam Panzer three. Mm-hmm. Three Panzer Fours. Probably missing something as well. Because uh, I found another Panzer. Do we count aircraft? No. I, I found... <laughs> the a... <sport> action. <laughs> no. I found another Panzer, Panzer Four the other day, so we've got three of those to do. Go on then, give that to me. Two Stugs. Um, God. Five Lorraine Schleppers. Uh, a Schwimmwagen. A Jag, a Jag Panzer Four L70. Mm-hmm. An SU-76M. Um... A dug in panther, an actual panther. Um, is that to paint? Yeah, this is. is I'm painting panther. Well, it's most actually that one needs finishing. Mm. That one, that one's had the base layers airbrushed down. <laughs> nice. Um, and a verbal vin. Two verbal vins. <laughs> Though they need building. <laughs> Oh, we're almost. I don't know. Yep. We four minutes left. Um, so we're almost out of battery. So I think that is the sign that yes. we will uh, completely stop. We don't work in this office, so I can't be bothered to bring through the thing. Because uh, when we're not streaming, this thing has about four batteries. Apparently, streaming eats the battery really fast. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. Um, 
One last question. No more questions after this. Intelligent Mr. Toad. Any suggestions for six by one plastic bases to model barbed wire on? Um, cut it out of plastic card. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cut it out of plastic I, card. I wouldn't use. I wouldn't even use plastic card. I'd use MDF. But whichever. Or go even smarter if you can find the right length. Tongue depressors, pre-made. Six by one tongue depressors have to exist, or something close enough that you just stick your. Uh, yeah, drill a hole in, feed your cocktail sticks up through, snip them at the back, and then just wrap your barbed wire around it. I think that's a really efficient solution to make them quick. That is terrifyingly cunning. Um, and on that bombshell. Yeah, <laughs> Nick Gams. Yeah, lots of first stuff to work on. But like I say, Wait. this is the year of catch up for me. What the point? This no is, uh, purchasing. This is the year of Aztec zombies. Yeah, <laughs> yes it is. And uh, yeah, nice. Thank Adler you very much. And Tiger. Hope, so yeah, hope, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, order this if you haven't already ordered it. Yep. It's very good. You'd be surprised if you if you didn't think it was something you're going to enjoy. I didn't. I was like, it's probably going to be a good game, but I don't think it's for me. And then I read it. Yep, absolutely. Seriously, give it a look. Cannot rave about this one enough. PDF, if you don't want to completely commit, take a look. It's really worth a look. It's a fantastic system. Can't recommend it enough. And if you really don't want to do it, then... Get one of this one instead. Um, we got something for everyone here at Warlord. <laughs> so I'll uh, see you all uh, next week, hopefully, with a game of Mythic Americas. Yes, and stay safe. Place your bets who you think is going to win. And it'll it's be a new system, so maybe it won't be the same result as always. Mm. <laughs> stay safe, everyone. Have a good week. <laughs>